Stewart in the newsroom. 74 people have been killed in a crush of spectators at this afternoon's FA Cup semi-final between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest at the Hillsborough Ground in Sheffield. One report says as many as 84 could be dead. It's the worst disaster in British football history. More than 200 other people were injured. Fans tried to escape up into the stands from the crush at the Liverpool end and over the spiked crowd barriers at the front. An ambulance appeared as the scale of the disaster became clear. impact on the younger ones because a lot more younger ones now are asking questions of why is it all seater stadia they're getting really well well trained into all seater stadia um, I think it's a it's a great thing when they do ask these questions they understand why um, 96 people lost their lives because of standing well part of standing at they played a part of it and I think it's a great thing now that I know, the families know, which is very important that other people cannot be killed at a football game again, hopefully because of Allsita Stadium. Teams have just left the field here. The trouble away to our left where there's a packed enclosure of Liverpool supporters. Two and a half minutes after the match started, they really came over. Um, life's never been the same and it probably never will be. But then you can't have, you can't move forward until you've had the truth and justice. So for 22 years, our lives, the family's lives, have been concentrating on trying to get to the truth. Getting justice out there, not just for the people who died, but also for all the fans and survivors who were there that day. Because, you know, they're the forgotten ones, you can't forget them. They went through an awful lot at that particular time. And so I think a lot of people's lives, not just the families, the survivors' lives have changed. Um, fans who saw that unfold, that disaster unfold, their lives have changed. But most importantly, the families have changed because obviously I live with now without my son and he was only about your age, 18. You know, he should have been, he would have been 40 this year. And all them years taken away from him and all the other 95 who died with James, the families have never been the same since. They've just concentrated on the fight for the truth and justice for 22 years. Top of the fence, police are trying desperately hard to hold them back, and at the moment it is simple mayhem. And there's many directions the group can take because there's so many people even now phone me up and want to meet with us, want to do things. And the, only way, the only direction I can think of is giving something back hopefully to our community, to, to Merseyside, give something back, if we can help in any way, in that way after, hopefully justice, as you've said, and truth comes out, maybe we can do something positive in that side of, of helping youngsters like yourselves, uh, doing interviews, maybe help you with your projects that you want to do. And I think that'd be a nice thing to do. Um, and the families will have to discuss what way they want to go once at all and you know the truth and justice is out. An ambulance has just come into the stadium and it's making its way through a vast crowd of people away to the left. The fans for 22 years, I mean when you go to a memorial service, uh, even to last year, they turn up every year to remember the 96. You know, they were there, their fans, they were their brothers, their sisters. The fans have been fantastic. They've supported us in every way possible they can. I'm not talking monetary, I'm talking about their support, their chanting for justice, uh, phoning up, anything we can do to support, we will do. It's not just the fans here. I met the other day, on Monday evening in this office, a guy from Denmark who's been so supportive, their fans over there, you know, even with monetary as well as the support and vocally. Uh, and it's just amazing the people that I've met and the decent people I've met 
since Hillsborough. From where I'm sitting here, dozens of people now lying on the ground and being attended to by police and St John's Ambulance. How they portray it today, um, if I go back 22 years, they portrayed it absolutely appalling. It was terrible, the media 22 years ago was terrible. I got you know, a great lot of people now in the media who are actually realising, you know, that, you know, there's things that haven't been told about Hillsborough. And I think they're portraying it a lot better now than what they've ever done over the past 22 years. They're, they're more, they listen more now, you know, and I think that's a great thing. People I've been interviewed by, you know, saying, you know, we know what happened. We know, you know, the media was very bad at that time. But they also, these are a different generation as well, like, you know, younger ones coming up who are realising, you know, we got bad, bad publicity 22 years ago. Now the press are giving us decent publicity for the first time. Yeah. Well, the only message I can give really to the younger generation is obviously, you know, they go, if they go to football grounds especially, when they see the all-seated stadia, always remember why it's all-seated stadia. I'm not talking monetary, it didn't cost monetary, it doesn't matter about that. It cost 96 young lives and that was their legacy they've left behind for them is your safety, everybody else's safety, no matter what team they support, that's their legacy. And, you know, don't disrespect that. And I think that's the only message I can give to the young ones, you know, is always remember them 96, what it cost them. Well, the Stay